first place. We're going to uh, England, and we go to China right afterwards. Uh, we land on Saturday morning, Saturday, Sunday evening, we take off for China. My passport is uh, absolutely full. There's not room for one more entry. The China visa was absolutely the last time I could go anywhere. <laughs> there probably isn't a place to stamp it in England. There's wonderful science being done at museums and universities all around the world, but there's some fascinating stuff happening in small little villages. In Leicester, England, in this unassuming townhouse, Terry Manning is producing some of the finest science done by an individual. Terry, to me, sort of, in my mind, he conjures up all the images I have of a mad scientist. He's got these 50 embryos percolating in this mild acid solution up in his attic. What's inside are little tiny baby dinosaur embryos. It's like a little time capsule of what a baby dinosaur would look like exactly. Wild. What do you think, Terry? <laughs> I think you have this mad scientist thing down quite well. This is great. It's a three-day cycle, and over that three-day period, you'll etch away about two thousandths of an inch. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, very slow process. Two thousandths of an inch every three days? Every, every three days. So... Uh, so how long will an egg take to uh, dissolve? Um, to take the rock away that we want to take away, um, it'll take most probably six to nine months. First of all, he's got the most amazing eggs in the world. They've been called better specimens than Archaeopteryx. Then we find out that he has egg yolk. Now we just find out he, he, he thinks he has dinosaur skin. And uh, it's... 1.30 and Terry has to go bowling at 8 o'clock. So we're, uh, we're under the gun here to try to get some good stuff in a very short yeah. amount of time. It's a little scary. Um, yeah. Is it the right way? We're late. <laughs> we have an hour and 15 minutes before our flight takes off for China and we're stuck in one traffic jam right after the other. Um, that's what's going on. 10, 10, uh, can you spell the name of the airline again? We missed our flight. It throws off the schedule completely. We might miss our deadline. We don't know if we can get a flight out. We don't know if there are flights out. And it's looking pretty grim. Yeah. I don't know. What is today? I have no idea. It's December. I know it because I see Christmas decorations all around. We've heard about this giant egg nest in China that's supposed to be about seven and a half feet in diameter. The biggest nest ever been found. I promised the Chinese that I would be there on time. Now we're going to be, looks like, 24 hours late. And if we don't get it, we essentially don't have a, a major part of the story. It's incredibly important to get to China. <laughs> We finally got here. We're in Henan province in central China. It's a thrill just to be in a foreign environment, knowing that right up ahead is this incredible, incredible specimen. We're hoping to see this huge, giant nest of eggs, beautifully prepared. And when we, we get there, and it looks like a, a waterbed. The lighting is awful. It's a hideous environment. It's, we're cold. We're freezing. And quite frankly, I want to go home. <laughs> It's, again, it's one of those situations where it doesn't look that good, you know, just looking at the piece, it doesn't look spectacular, it is spectacular, but we want those sort of naga hide edges of the, the nest that they've built to go away, and uh, so the way to do it is to photograph it from straight up, looking straight down. All the electricity's off in the village, it's completely out, nobody has electricity. Um, we've managed to scavenge this diesel-powered generator, and uh, hopefully it'll give us enough power to get my, my strobes working.
Things were going well, probably too well. But then disaster strikes. I just got a couple shots off before the generator fried my light kit. Uh, package blue. Brand new seven thousand dollar I think we got it. <laughs> It's actually kind of pretty. Is it worth $7,000, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so <funny. laughs> Forty-eight hours later, we're back on a plane. In the meantime, I have to get new lights, because I can't photograph without lights. Yeah, I think we're pushing 500,000 miles at this point. We've accumulated all of our miles together, maybe more. All for the love of old dead things. Luck has followed us to Canada. We've arrived on the coldest day of the year, a raging blizzard. The whole trip has just become a series of pictures right now. I'm just thinking about, I have six done and I have one more to go. Like the Terminator, sort of. That is so cute. Look at that. Brian Cooley is as passionate as anybody I've ever met about the subject of dinosaurs. He is a person that's able to get into a dinosaur skeleton and flesh it out like nobody I've ever seen before. Because these aren't precious, okay? I can make another egg. Oh, really? So don't sweat it. If I had to imagine what a baby dinosaur embryo would look like, Brian's done it. This is it. I mean, he's really created here my vision of what a dinosaur would look like. You can almost hear the thing breathing as you look at it. I just love this. Well, it's coming to, the whole story is coming to life for me now. I mean, all of a sudden, those beautiful eggs that are wonderful just the way they are, now you have a shot right next to it where it just comes to life. It's like the last piece of the puzzle is found, you know, when you're doing the jigsaw puzzle, the thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> and finally, you get the chance to see what it looks like. In the back of my mind, I, I realized that we went through quite a bit to get this stuff in a short amount of time, and it was a heroic effort. The readers of the magazine will never notice that, nor I don't think they should care about that. But it is a great satisfaction to actually see the work published. To me, it's more than just a, a matter of a collection of pictures. It's a legacy I'm building. I want to leave behind a great body of work that shows our natural history of the planet, and to try to get a sense of wonder to everybody of what came before us. T-Rex, this is the superstar of the dinosaurs. Six tons of pure predator. And it's not just a big carnivore, it's also big business. Not long ago, the scientific community was all abuzz about the discovery of the most complete T-Rex skeleton ever found. And to no one's surprise, everyone wanted it. They're meat-eating marauders among the biggest, baddest carnivores that ever walked the earth. Animals 40 feet long, more than 13 feet tall, armed with steak knives for teeth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is the quintessential jaws of death. And an enduring mystery, since no complete skeletons have ever been unearthed. 
now a remarkable discovery is helping reveal secrets that have been buried for 67 million years. It's not just a once in a lifetime discovery, it's a once in a hundred lifetime discovery or I don't know, thousands of lives, you know, it's like I never could have dreamed of finding something so spectacular. Sixty-five million years ago, a giant asteroid crashed into Earth, wreaking environmental havoc that some scientists believe killed off the dinosaurs. But asteroid or not, one thing's for sure, the world of Tyrannosaurus Rex came to a definite end. Until now. One T-Rex is about to travel through time and embark on an incredible adventure. August 12, 1990. A sweltering day in the South Dakota Badlands. Sue Hendrickson, a field paleontologist for the Black Hills Institute, is about to stumble on the discovery of a lifetime. There was this one small area I hadn't been looked at. It was constantly on my mind. Every night I'd say, oh, geez, you know, I didn't get over there. I really need to get over there. I needed to go and look at that one place. And it's really, really strange to be pulled like that. Sue has an uncanny knack for finding things. And something seems to be drawing her closer. She actually called me, like, and it's no rational explanation for it. When she spots some bone fragments along the base of a cliff, she senses an extraordinary possibility. I looked up the hill, and about seven, eight feet up, there was uh, quite a few bones, so then I crawled up the, beside it to, to look closer, and there were three vertebrae in a row and there was a rib sticking out. Sue shares her find with Peter Larson, head of the Black Hills Institute. Well, immediately I asked Susan, you know, is there more of it? And she said, there's lots more. And so we ran over the two miles to the, to the, to the site, and, and there, coming out of the hill, about seven feet up, was this huge cross-section of bones. And I knew at that point that the whole thing was going to be there. The idea is that I believe that the tail's going that way and the skull is going this way. But we're just going to have to dig it up and see. It was so, I don't know, uh, the, the exact word isn't even really in the language. It was not, it was way beyond exciting. It was, it was just like climbing to Mount Everest and, and being at the top and looking around. When I found her and then while you're digging her, you know, it's like, wow, I'm the first person to see her in 67 million years. I really felt like she was meant to be found. The new discovery is quickly dubbed Sue the T-Rex in honor of Susan Hendrickson. The team begins the arduous task of separating Sue from the sandstone cliff. As they peel away layer after layer of earth and rock, her massive skeleton slowly begins to reveal itself bone by magnificent bone. And as we excavated her, especially after we exposed more bones and we realized how complete she was, we talked to her, you feel like she's alive and that she's been waiting. You're uncovering her. It's like you're, you're revealing her. You're bringing her back to life. Within 17 days, she's excavated and carefully wrapped in plaster jackets for transport back to the lab in Hill City. For 18 months, lab technicians at the Black Hills Institute meticulously prepare Sue for exhibition. She's the largest, most complete T-Rex ever found, and she's to be the centerpiece of their new museum.